Hi guys, it's Allie. Welcome to another Time Travel Tuesday, where we combine tingles and nostalgia, as decided by you. So, I got tons of votes on last week's Time Travel Tuesday for this week's topic, which is awesome, so I want to share with you what the top five topics were. Coming in at number five, we had uh, Full House. <laughs> number four was Star Wars. Number three, the show Friends. Number two, Harry Potter. And number one... Uh, the Legend of Zelda. <laughs> so, I myself am not super, super knowledgeable on the franchise. And for those of you who also are not super knowledgeable about Zelda, I do encourage you to stick around because I found a lot of really interesting uh, facts and information about the game. So I think you'll still find it interesting even if you're not a fan of the game. And before I start, also I want to say to those of you who are great lovers of The Legend of Zelda, I won't be sharing, obviously, encyclopedic level of detail about the games, the world, and the lore. And that's just because it's so incredibly vast and rich, as you know. And I just couldn't fit that into a video. But what I will be sharing are some really cool little facts that you may or may not know that I think everyone will find interesting, whether they are a longtime fan of the game or have never even played it. Oh, but before I do that, I also want to show you. I found this little tin of Zelda mints. I'm gonna have a couple while I talk to you. I'm gonna be kind of chewing on them and stuff as I talk. I like the little sound they make. This is a little metal tin. There's a little Zelda Triforce. had a Zelda mint before, so I'm really looking forward to having one. I wonder what they taste like. Probably peppermint. Yeah, I think it's safe to say they taste like peppermint. Okay. So, Zelda, The Legend of Zelda. adventure video game a series of video games that is published by Nintendo and was released in 1986 and it was released on the NES or Nintendo Entertainment System which was also known as the Family Computer or Famicom just to give you sort of a point of reference. The game was released on an 8-bit cartridge. And to give you an idea, today's uh, game systems actually use 64-bit processors multiple 64-bit processors, so it gives you kind of an idea of the 
leap in technology that's taken place since since then. Uh, but the game was created by uh, two men named uh, Shigeru Miyamoto. The other man was Takashi Tezuka. Now there was a um, composer by the name of K- Koji Kondo who has written, well, he hasn't written all of the music for the game, but he has worked on music for Zelda games since the very first game and I believe he still does I'm gonna have two there's so little oh 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 I wasn't expecting this they're very minty but they're also the kind that completely melt in your mouth that don't you can't really like suck on them they just sort of dissolve mm. um i think this one isn't doing it the first one did it oh okay nope this one's hard I wonder why that first one was so melty. Okay. <clears throat> anyway. So. Zelda is very widely regarded as one of the most important games and most groundbreaking games of all time. There are several reasons for that. This is weird, you guys. These are all hard, crunchy mints, and the other, the first one I had just melted. I hope it wasn't poisoned. Well, if it was, it's been very nice knowing all of you. said, Zelda is known as a very groundbreaking, innovative, important game in gamer culture. One of the major reasons for that is that it was basically one of, if not the first game to sort of incorporate story into the game. At the time, most games were just about winning points, winning and losing, but Zelda, Legend of Zelda, is regarded as more of a sort of an epic tale that you experience as you play, that unfolds over time as you play the game, which up until that point hadn't really been done. Not on those types of games, anyway. And the ability to use lots of different types of items in the game was new as well. Dozens of different types of items. And it had this giant world that was so huge and so vast that could just be explored. That was full of hidden secrets and things made it an incredibly sort of rich gameplay experience for the users. But what made it probably one of the most 
innovative elements. What's that? It was the very first console game that had a save function <clears throat> that allowed you to stop playing the game and then resume later and pick up where you left off. That hadn't been done in console games before. And Zelda sort of broke the mold. also had, I think just the original, maybe not, but the original had a, um, it's called a second quest, where when you beat the game, you could go through and play it a second time, but everything would be a little bit different, and everything would also be a little bit more challenging, and that was very unique. And it was also very innovative for its time, for the 80s, which is super cool. Music played a really big role in the game as well. It's full of sort of musical puzzles and musical instruments that player, move forward in the game. And the music can, will change in real time as you're playing. So, um, the creator of the game, Shigeru Miyamoto, when he was a kid, spent a lot of time. He grew up in Kyoto. He spent a lot of time as a kid sort of exploring just the outdoors. And he would spend lots of time sort of roaming the, the hillside and exploring forests and caves. And he loved the sort of sense of adventure and excitement and wonder that that afforded him. And he said that that was a major uh, influence in the creation of The Legend of Zelda. to name the game Zelda because one day he learned that uh, F. Scott Fitzgerald the famous author that his wife was named Zelda and he liked the name and that was it that's how he decided the original Legend of Zelda. There was uh, Legend of Zelda 2, or Zelda 2, The Adventure of Link. That game was not super well received. Um, I think namely because it was a side-scroller for some reason, instead of uh, the top-down perspective. And after that, they went back to top-down. So I'm not sure 
why it was made a side scroller but I think a lot of people didn't love it for that reason um, yeah so it's considered a bit of a fail but it was also released in a gold And after that was A Link to the Past, which returned to the top-down perspective, like I said. But it also um, added an alternate dimension into the game, and it, it was called The Dark World, I think. This alternate dimension that you could play in. The Legend of Zelda. Very short lived. There's only 13 episodes. And it was featured on every Friday episode of the Super Mario Brothers Super Show. When um, it was in the time slot that the Super Mario Brothers cartoon normally aired. It didn't run for very long at all. And it had a lot of sort of, even though it was short, it had a lot of continuing themes. For instance, in every single episode, Link attempts to get a kiss from Princess Zelda. But every time it's this plan is thwarted by some out outside forces and they get interrupted. in every single episode, I believe. And Link has a little, he even has a catchphrase that he says when he's sort of being um, rejected or shunned or whatever by the princess. He goes, well, excuse me, princess. may not be a reference to either Steve Martin in SNL or Han Solo in Star Wars. But I'm not sure. It might be neither. It might just be a coincidence. show, um, when they stopped airing the cartoon, there was a show called, um, Captain N, the Game Master, and they a few times had, um, sort of slightly different versions of Link and Zelda in that show, which was interesting. who voiced Link and Zelda in the Legend of Zelda cartoon were the same actors that voiced them in Captain N, the Game Master. So I know that with these game cartridges, um, if there was ever wasn't working properly and you suspected that there was dust inside, 
you would kind of blow on the inside of it uh, to get the dust out so I thought that might make maybe an interesting trigger I wanted to try it so now I understand that when you were in the middle of the game and your cartridge was acting up, you probably weren't blowing on it calmly and gently like that. There's probably a lot more rage behind the behind the gust. But for our purposes. already know is the main character of the Zelda world and when you play a game you're playing as Link Link is nearly always except for I believe two uh, two of the games in the series nearly always shown as left-handed knows that the reason for that is that he's modeled after, or that aspect of him is modeled after one of the creators, Miyamoto, who is left-handed. Also, this may be common knowledge for Zelda players. Robin Williams, who's one of my favorite actors of all time, is a, I think he's a really big gamer, and he named his daughter Zelda after the game. When his wife was pregnant with their daughter, they were playing Zelda one day sort of dawned on them to name the baby Zelda. Um, in, I believe, 2011, there was an art book released that featured all kinds of beautiful artwork and uh, a Zelda timeline, um, a, a manga, I think, and the demand for it was so high that it topped the Amazon sales chart, replacing Fifty Shades of Grey. There was some interesting, a little bit of interesting controversy. an element of the game in the original, I believe. Yeah, in the original. I believe it's the third dungeon of the first quest in the original game. That, when you look at it, is shaped rather like, well, not rather like, completely like a left-facing swastika. Now the shape is actually 
what's called um, manji, I think, which in Buddhism is a symbol of uh, good fortune, I think, peace maybe, good fortune. So in Japan, when the game was released, this didn't cause any controversy at all. No one really cared. In the US and Britain, I think, it didn't cause a ton of controversy, but it was still pointed out. So it caused a bit. And then, um, in the first game, there's a treasure item that's called the Book of Magic. And it was changed from what it originally was to look different, but originally it looked exactly like, well, it looked like a, a Bible. It was a Bible. And that was changed. So it's not too Controversy or offense. One thing that I thought was really funny is that uh, well, there's a game in the series. Um, I believe it's the first, the first 3D Zelda called Ocarina of Time. had a trailer come out that was changed almost immediately because of how offensive it was. And it said, um, oh gosh, what did it say? It said something kind of sexist, so they changed it. <laughs> it's actually pretty funny. It says, it says a few things, and then it says, Wilt thou get the girl, or play like one? <laughs> I think that pissed some people off. So Nintendo thought, oh, probably can't say that. Let's change that real quick before anyone notices. <laughs> but it ran for a little while. Speaking of Ocarina of Time, an ocarina is a little flute, kind of an instrument, and um, there was a, after the release of the game Ocarina of Time, there was a big spike in sales of ocarinas all over the place. And I found out about this one store in St. Louis that opened in 2005 or something. After Ocarina of Time came out. Well after. They sold ocarinas and they didn't. They had no idea that Legends of Legend of Zelda even really existed, let alone had anything to do with their business. But not long after they opened, they started realizing as people were coming in to shop in the store, what a gigantic fan base. Zelda had. And they realized then that they actually owed a lot of their business success to the game Ocarina of Time. So, they now offer, well, they have an entire section on their website. And they offer a very wide selection of 
other related products. They actually sell a product called the Ocarina of Time. And they have lots of lots of uh, ocarinas in the shape of rupees. Those little jewel things. And I think they even sell a, a book of music from Ocarina of Time and Twilight Princess that you can learn on the Ocarina. what they're called, but this is, there's one for power, one piece for wisdom, one piece for courage. And basically, in a nutshell, the goal of the game is to unite all three pieces of the Triforce in order to defeat Ganon, who's the bad guy, rescue Princess Zelda, and bring peace to the kingdom of Hyrule. has little, um, I don't know if you can see. Maybe you can, it has little sort of divots, little dots. Along the side, I like that little noise. So, Legend of Zelda is obviously hugely influential and it made just an incredible impact on gaming period, but like gaming culture, I guess. It's actually um, been an influence on a lot of very popular role-playing games that people are playing today. It, I'd say it was probably pretty, a pretty direct influence on uh, like Final Fantasy. And then in the game um, Fable 3, there's definitely some Zelda influences there. There's a scene in graveyard 
not a scene, but a part of the game in, in a graveyard, and there's a tombstone. Where if you go up to the tombstone, the description says, um, It is dangerous to go alone. Take this. I think that's the phrase. Which, um, it's just a very popular, well-known phrase from Legend of Zelda. And, uh, so then when you dig up the the stone, the tombstone, it gives you a toy sword. And then, there's also a, uh, a really long quest chain in World of Warcraft that has a lot of references to Legend of Zelda. There's a character, or a little little gnome, I think, that is named Lincoln. Like Lincoln. And he's pretty much dressed exactly like Link. He even says some of the same things. But I think he says he says some of the things that I think that he says some of the things that Link says in this cartoon because in the game, Link mostly didn't speak at all. So the game had a huge, huge impact on the world of gaming. made a ton of sort of groundbreaking innovations. Oh, I forgot to tell you this earlier, but I thought this was really interesting. Um, before the game was released, the big guys at Nintendo weren't totally sure about it. And they, were, they did some pre-release game testing, and all the people that played kind of complained that it was too difficult and too confusing. They didn't know what was going on. So, what Mia Miyamoto did, instead of making it easier, is he made it harder. <laughs> Which is risky, but it turned out to be a good move. He, um, I believe he made it so that the game, at the beginning of the game, you no longer start with uh, Link no longer starts with his sword you actually have to find the sword first well, whereas before I guess the game started with the sword already in your possession and he had really a really strong feeling that he was on the right track and his his philosophy I guess was that game is challenging and it makes you, forces you to think about what you're going to do next, which a lot of games weren't doing at the time. But if a game does that, then it, that forces communication and discussion between players. And he, uh, he, was, he knows, he knew gamers, he knew gamer culture, and he knew that gamers talk to each other and shared information and tips and tricks. So he was a really smart man. He knew that if he made it so the game was challenging and different and unlike other games that everyone playing it would have to does, the way I see it, does two things. It obviously will help increase sales because the word of mouth effect is probably the best marketing tool there is. But also, I think that, and I think he knew this, I think it creates 
a more rich, sort of immersive, exciting, impactful gaming experience. And the truth is that this game is very highly respected and well loved by the people who grew up playing it for pretty much that exact reason. They had a gaming experience that they had never really had before, that no one had really ever had before. And that made Legend of Zelda something really special. some interesting facts about The Legend of Zelda today because I definitely did and I also hope that I didn't get poisoned by my Zelda mint and that I'll get to see you guys again soon your vote for next week's Time Travel Tuesday topic in the comments below. And I'll be seeing you guys again very soon. Sweet dreams. Time travel.